So in this video, I'm going to show you how our vaginas store and hold different kinds of trauma in different sections of the vaginal canal. I'll also show you how the penis holds different healing powers in every section of the shaft. <laughs> In Sanskrit, the word for vagina is yoni, and yoni means sacred place. And our sacred place encompasses our womb, the actual vagina, the vulva, the labia, everything, and all the organs that have to do with generation. So in this diagram, you can see that the entrance of the vagina stores guilt and shame. The next section holds trauma, fear, and paranoia. If you've grown up in a religious context, I'm sure by now you can relate. The higher up you go in the canal, the heavier the emotions get. Next we have shame, worry, guilt, and then we have grief, loss, and sadness, and the cervix can hold hatred and cruelty. In Sanskrit, lingam means the wand of light, and sex, S-E-X, stands for sacred energy exchange. So if we put the yoni diagram and the lingam diagram side by side, you will see that the tip of the lingam represents the heart. The heart represents love and therefore it is love that enters the yoni and love that can and does heal all trauma. So how do we, how do we define trauma? Trauma is anything that you may experience that takes away your ability to cope. The main ingredient of anything traumatic is a feeling of helplessness. When someone or something takes away your capacity and your ability to defend yourself, unreleased survival energies get stuck in your body. And most importantly, they get stuck in your nervous system. If you are not able to, or you don't release the energy from your nervous system, it can result in anxiety, panic, psychosomatic problems, and behavior. Trauma affects us physically. It changes our behavior. It intensifies our emotions, and it transforms our brains. Anything that happens too fast, too soon, or too much can be traumatic. So let's talk about how you can use sexual energy to heal trauma and release the negative emotions stored in your yoni. From the moment you are born as a girl child, you are made to feel and believe that being born female is some kind of curse, some kind of burden, and a negative responsibility. As young as a toddler, you are taught how to close your legs and keep them closed, especially around men. But no one tells you why. What's worse is that no one makes it a man's responsibility to behave appropriately around women and children. But that's a story for another day. As young little girls, we're told to cover our bodies, our breasts, our legs, be modest, don't wear revealing clothing because there's men in the house, etc. Also, many religious traditions reinforce a negative concept of sexuality where celibacy is for strong saints and sex is for weak sinners. Don't have sex before marriage. You are worthless without your virginity. Men don't like women who are like this. Men don't like women who are like that. One of the false narratives I heard when I was in high school is that you can tell a girl has started having sex when she starts getting an attitude. Like, are you joking? But at the same time, when I look back, and think about it, the most confident girls at high school were the ones who started having sex as teenagers. Maybe it's connected to what I'm sharing in this video about sex healing trauma and taking away the guilt and shame of being a woman. Let's explore it further together. In my own sexual healing journey, healing from societal, cultural and religious shame, I have realized that there's a strong connection between these two things. The more pleasure I allow myself in the bedroom, the more pleasure I allow myself in life in general. And I suppose the opposite is true as well. A woman who doesn't have or allow herself to orgasm probably isn't a very happy, blissful woman and probably doesn't truly enjoy her life. When you have been traumatized and hurt for so long, 
You think and believe that your normal state is a state of pain, worry or hurt. But this world and this life is for enjoying. Listening to yourself and allowing yourself to receive pleasure from your partner, from yourself or whatever you use during sex confronts the toxic cultural scripts, social messaging, childhood programming and traumas that you might have thought were buried and forgotten. Allowing yourself to feel, to be sensual and sexual and to realize the sacredness of sex and pleasure allows you to recognize the inner narratives inhibiting your pleasure, but it also encourages you to introspect. It makes you more body conscious and aware in terms of your boundaries in and out of the bedroom, what you like and don't like, what you accept and will not accept. Maisha Battle says, we are such a pleasure shaming culture. We champion the idea of work hard, play hard. So when you feel good, you ask yourself, am I worthy of this? Did I earn it? Did I do enough to please my partner to feel this good? I shouldn't feel this good. I'm going to shut it down. You always feel ashamed for being a woman and for having female anatomy. Close your legs, cover your boobs. I remember forcing myself or feeling obliged to put on a spaghetti top underneath dresses that were low cut. That idea came mostly from my religious programming and religious sexual shame. It makes you feel like your boobs are a sin or that your boobs are bad. Yet it's the most natural thing to have boobs and everyone has sucked from a breast before. But the over-sexualization and demonization of breasts disconnects you from your own body. So then you grow up and then you're told, start massaging your boobs to check for lumps. And then you're just like, what the heck? How do I even begin? I've never touched my own boobs. I don't want anyone touching my boobs because all my life I've had to cover them up so as to not let brothers stumble. It's very uncomfortable and unfair to be expected to just switch because you've reached a certain age or stage of your life. Speaking of other natural things that have been shunned for no reason, there is no one on earth, living or dead, who didn't come from the act of sexual intercourse. But shh, you're not allowed to talk about it. You're not allowed to want it. You're not allowed to desire it. You can't talk about it at the dinner table, even though every human being sitting there with you is there because someone had sex with someone else. Sex is easily accessible today. You can find it online, on TV, etc. But a lot of people find it shallow and dissatisfying. Some are sexually wounded after degrading, disappointing, humiliating, exploitative, shameful or unstimulating sexual experiences. This discomfort may manifest in subtle or obvious ways such as the fear of nudity, the fear of PDA, or the fear of erotic art. It can manifest as a fear of intimacy, impotence, sexual perversions, or most commonly, an inability to release inhibitions in order to fully enjoy sex. Society as we know it has done nothing to enhance our sexual wisdom. Sex is encouraged, but at the same time condemned. And worst of all, the natural act that created us is sensationalized. So what can you do about it? Spiritual transformation through sexual experience begins with accepting the body as a temple of divine energy. Taoism and Tantra have taught that sexuality is a tool to transform the spirit and recent research suggests that satisfying sex also has the capacity to heal the body and the mind. Sexologist Dr. Rudolf von Urban says, Sexual closeness is the body's emotional fuel. Start having great mindful sex. Society has robbed a lot of people of their sexual power, the opportunity to navigate their own sexuality. Mindful sex gives us the tools to start forming that connection. It's not about performance, how long you take, how many times a week you do it. Becoming more mindful will allow you to more easily return to a sense of presence when your mind wanders or tries to convince you that pleasure is wrong. Start exploring self-pleasure, 
so that you can get used to feeling good. We get so used to feeling bad in this world because we have our family, friends, colleagues, church members, pastors and trolls telling us how not good we are. Watch my previous video about sex for more information on this. Have you tried eye gazing? Eye gazing is the act of looking into someone's eyes for an extended amount of time. It's a powerful, intimate practice that can help you become closer to another person and also helps you face yourself. Eye gazing helps you recognize your emotions. There's a reason why people say eyes are the window to the soul. Your eyes are a powerful representation of your emotions. How to practice eye gazing. There are many ways to do it, but here is one method. Sit in a comfortable position and face your partner. You can hold hands if you like. Secondly, set a timer for your desired amount of time and look into your partner's eyes. Breathe deeply and allow yourself to blink. Keep your gaze soft and try not to look away. You can break your gaze when the timer goes off. The goal of this exercise is to connect your energies without speaking. Most tantric practitioners recommend eye gazing for 10 to 20 minutes. Let yourself be. Feel your emotions. Cry, laugh, make sounds. Release the tension inside of you. Here are some of the things people say after a session of eye gazing. They feel deeply connected with themselves. They feel deeply connected with each other. There is a sense of closeness and gratitude. Some have powerful emotions come up which results in either burst of laughter or sobbing. The next thing you can do is breathing and sounding out aloud. If you've been watching my videos for a while, you've heard me speak about the connection between the yoni and the larynx. In terms of chakras, the throat and the sacral chakra are the only energy centers in your body that let energy out. According to the Tao, a trauma and tightness in the yoni has a direct link on a woman's ability to speak up for herself, speak her mind, and whether or not she feels heard. Have you tried yoni mapping therapy? As mentioned before, yoni is a Sanskrit word for vagina meaning sacred space. The vagina is indeed a sacred place. It is literally the place where all human life is birthed. But many women don't love or honor their vaginas. Have you ever judged your own vulva, how she looks compared to the airbrushed photoshopped versions that you've seen on TV? If you judge and think badly of your own yoni, there's no way you think highly of yourself. Work on changing this mindset and see your confidence increase. You will glow from the inside. Yoni mapping therapy gives you an opportunity to discover the potential of your yoni and to come to a place of wholeness, love, respect and honor for yourself. You get to know yourself on a deeper level. It is a holistic modality that embraces all aspects of the self. Physical, emotional, mental, spiritual and sexual. Before I teach you how to do it, let me walk you through the benefits and why you may want to consider it. It relaxes pelvic tension, restores awareness to the areas of numbness internally. It supports muscle engagement and balance. It reconnects your body after an operation in the pelvic or abdominal area. It gives you the opportunity to have a respectful experience with your body after sexual trauma from past experiences or abuse or violation. It addresses the shame or guilt in relation to sex or your vagina. It helps you feel more connected to your yoni and your pelvis. It helps you heal emotionally from operations, abortions, or miscarriage. It allows you to receive a nurturing touch without a specific goal. It creates space for old emotions related to past experiences to be felt and released. It's another form of self-care and self-nurturing. It makes you more aware of your body and your boundaries. It helps you get to know your own body. It helps you navigate and learn about how your body responds to certain positions and insertions with regard to painful or uncomfortable sex. It can help you explore different ways to explore pleasure with your partner. 
It helps you let go of old habits of self-pleasuring that might not be so good for you, such as relying on a vibrator to reach orgasm. It helps you navigate around your body to see what else do you find pleasurable besides the clitoris. Here are some of the reviews from women who have tried it. Yoni mapping has helped me through trauma with such care and grace. It is such a Yoni honoring experience. It was fascinating to feel parts of myself that I had never felt. I can't really put it into words what transpired, except that it was one of the most profound and deeply healing experiences of my life. I had no idea that all of that was inside me, that it's all part of me. I feel so connected to my body. I'm feeling all these sensations that I've never felt before. It's like my vagina and I are friends now. Don't do yoni mapping if you are in the first trimester of pregnancy. If you are pregnant or have a history of miscarriage or premature birth, don't do it if you've just given birth recently. Wait at least six weeks postpartum and don't do it if you've had an operation in the abdominal or pelvic area. Wait at least six weeks. You need to give your body a chance to heal. Don't do it if you are currently in a state of trauma. It is not beneficial if you are distressed. Please see a body-based trauma-informed therapist in this case. And don't do it if you are under the age of 18. So how can you do yoni mapping, which is also known as de-armoring? It's all about releasing tension so that you can restore blood flow, sensitivity and awareness to the yoni region. So do what comes naturally. Navigate through your yoni, exploring areas of numbness, restriction, disconnection and muscle tension. If your partner is helping you, this will be a good time to start practicing how to voice your needs and preferences in order to strengthen your yoni and also your larynx. As you massage, you will be creating a mental map of your innermost part, your yoni. Discovering what feels tight, what feels relaxed, what feels good. You may also realize that certain parts bring up certain emotions. Afterwards, most women feel more alive. They feel much more sensation in the pelvis and most of all, they feel a deeper connection with their own body and a newfound sense of respect for their vagina. Thank you for watching. No.